So there's two areas of Autodesk Vault that we're going to have a look at today. The first of which is the ADMS console, the Autodesk Data Management Server console. This is where system administrators or Vault users can have a central administrator area or administration area for their Vault or Vaults on their server. This will generally be installed on a server box running a version of Microsoft Server and a version of Microsoft SQL Server. In my case, I'm just running as a, a local standalone user, so I have both the server and the client installed on the same machine. Um, but generally in a recommended setup, this wouldn't be the case. In the Data Management Server console, on the left-hand side, we have a tree. This tree shows the name of the machine that Vault is installed on, and then all of the vaults underneath that machine. So we can see with my machine selected, we can see a little status information on the right hand side. Things like when the console was last backed up, how many volts you're running, and the total size of your SQL databases. If I expand my vaults folder, you can see that I've got one vault. If I select that vault, again, I get a status up update on the right hand side of my screen, which just shows me some information like the creation date of the vault, where the file store is located on the server, database size, file store size. These are quite important bits of information for a system administrator to be able to look at throughout the use of the vault. Underneath that on the left hand side you have a library section. Your library section would be where any library databases are shown. In my instance, I haven't got any libraries or content center libraries attached into my vault. I will use them on a standalone basis. But if you were to have them, this is where they would show up. On the left hand side at the bottom, we have a management section. This is where any log files that vault produces will be stored and is the first place for you to look should you have any problems or troubleshooting. If I expand console logs, we can see all of the ADMS console logs. These are logged every day and will generally show you everything that the ADMS console is doing throughout a time period. Server logs, otherwise known as vlogs, will show you everything that happens between a client machine and a server machine throughout the day. They could be from checking out a file to checking in a file. This is the first place to look should you have any problems because it will pinpoint possible errors within your vault. The final two log files that we have are file store logs and email logs. If you ever have an issue with Vault and need to log a support case, the likelihood is that you will be asked for these log files. Very simple to export by selecting a log file, right click and choosing export from the drop down menu. This saves the file out in a TXT format for you to share. The final two sections on the left hand side, work groups and file stores, we're not going to be looking at today as these are purely based for multi-site replication. Multi-site replication is where, that you, where you can have a replicated vault on multiple sites over the, over the globe, so internationally. So for example you could have a site in the UK that was replicating to a site in America with the same vaults, the same file stores and the same SQL databases. We're not going to be looking into that today, so I shall leave that for a later session. At the top of my ADMS console, I've got a couple of drop-down options. We're just going to go through a couple of these. Under Tools, the first option we have is Backup and Restore. The ADMS console has its own Backup and Restore functionality. It's very much recommended by Autodesk um, and by ourselves that you use the Autodesk Data Management Server Console Backup and Restore facilities rather than using any other Backup and Restore facilities. This is because it backs up the data that is required to fully restore in any Vault environment um, should you ever work, walk into any problems or have any problems. The backup procedure is very simple, following through a simple wizard to select what you would like backed up if you would like a validated backup and if you want to ignore non-replicated -replic files etc etc. 
the process of completing a backup can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours depending on your database size. The restore process is pretty much the same but in reverse. It just literally asks you for a, uh, a, a restore directory where a backup's been stored. It will then restore all of that data, wiping anything that you've got currently in the vault and restoring that backup back. It's worth pointing out that you can create scheduled backups. There's two ways to do this. First of all, as long as you have the recommended and the correct login credentials and read-write permissions, the ADMS console comes with its own scheduled backup configuration. Using this dialog box, we're able to specify a backup location, a log file, a vault user, and anything to do with scheduling a backup, how many days you want it to perform per week, and what time. What this will do upon selecting OK is it will essentially create a batch file, a .bat. That batch file will contain all of these settings within this dialog box and it will be added into a task in the Windows Task Scheduler. Quick tip, if for any reason when you press OK to save this batch file or to set up this backup schedule, sometimes it pops up with a little error saying it was unable to create the scheduled task. This is just down to a, a user permissions error usually. So the thing to do in that instance is select to open the batch file folder. This will throw you into the install location of your ADMS version and you will have a .bat file in this folder for all of those backup settings. All you would need to do is simply open the task scheduler manually from within Windows like so. My mistake, that's the inventor one. Let me just make sure I open the correct task scheduler. This one here. You would open the task scheduler manually and manually create a task to look at that batch file. Underneath tools, we also have administration. The administration area of the ADMS console allows you to create users user groups and look and modify roles and permissions. If I just select users, we can see that we have a default administrator user set up and out of the box you also get a default guest account which is always disabled. You then have the ability to add multiple accounts should you want to using a very straightforward interface. You can create groups should you want to to house groups of users. This can sometimes be easier in larger companies where you can control security based on groups rather than individual users. Finally we can have a look at the different roles available under the vault. So with regards to the ADMS server console that's kind of it, that's all we want to go through today. Let's just drop back now and have a little look at the Autodesk Vault client. So let's just open my Vault Professional client. At this stage it's worth pointing out that there are three different versions of Vault. The first of which is Autodesk Vault Basic. Most of the people that use Autodesk software will have access to Vault Basic. This is because it comes in the box of all the design suites um, and pretty much all of the standalone Autodesk products bar the LT products. Vault Basic gives you simple data management one step above what you would have if you were just storing on a network folder. It gives you all of your Vault security, it gives you an ADMS console where you can back up and restore very quickly and very easily, and it gives you check-in and check-out facilities on all of your files. The next step up is Vault Workgroup which takes all of those data management functionalities and adds on product lifecycle functionalities. For example, we could take a product and we can put it through several different lifecycle phases from work in progress to for review to release to manufacturing, etc. etc. And each of these product lifecycles will have an effect on what can and can't be do done with that specific file. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and log into my Vault client. Finally, with the version I'm running today, Vault Professional, you have all of the functionality from Vault Basic, all of the functionality from Vault Workgroup, with additional functionality for items. So with Vault Professional, you can set up your CAD designs and your CAD files to become items. With that functionality, you can assign engineering change orders. You can also fully control and integrate your bill of materials directly inside of Vault Professional. All we're going to be looking at today is the data management functionality and the lifecycle management functionality. So generally, we're going to be looking at Autodesk Vault Workgroup. The first thing you should notice when you see the Vault client interface is that it's quite a familiar and friendly environment. It looks very similar to Microsoft Outlook, your email client. It looks very familiar um, and similar to Windows Explorer. We have a folder list on the left hand side. Underneath this folder list we have a simple Project Explorer. That's the root of our Vault. And underneath our Project Explorer at the moment you can see I have three folders. One for content center files, one for designs and one for libraries. I also have an Inventor IPJ file, an Inventor project file, which is linked back to all of the clients connected to this vault so that they're using the same design data, the same templates, and they're looking in the correct location within the vault for their designs. If I expand my designs folder, we can see that it's currently empty. So I've got nothing in my vault. I've got a nice, plain, blank vault. So one thing to note now that I didn't mention earlier, on the Vault server, there are two aspects to the Vault storage itself. First of all, you have the SQL database. So this is where all the metadata for all of your files are stored. Alongside the Vault SQL database, you have the Vault file store. This is where the physical designs, so your physical CAD files, whether they're DWGs, inventor parts, um, 3ds Max renders, that's where all of those files will be stored on the server. What we're looking at here is a front end to access both of those pieces of information from metadata to physical CAD designs in the file store. You would never edit the SQL database metadata or the file store directly from the server. You would always only look at it through a Vault client. So the first step we want to do here is start adding some information into the vault. I have three folders under my Project Explorer. If I just look at the files, file drop down and go to set working folder, we can see that I have a local working folder on my D drive called Vault Workspace. If I open up this working folder, we can see that we have the same three folders. Ignore these two as we're not going to be talking about those at the moment but we've got content center files, we have designs and we have libraries and under that project root which is essentially this location we have our inventor project file. If I go into my designs folder we can see that I've been working on a few designs locally on my machine and they're obviously not currently in the vault so what I want to do first of all is take some of these files and just load them into the vault just to set, show you how it works. So first things first I'm going to open up Autodesk Inventor. Once Autodesk Inventor is loaded up I'm just going to ensure that I've got my correct project file which is the one that's downloaded from the vault and I'm going to make sure that I open the correct files and check them in. So I can go to projects, I can see that I'm using my RB Vault project in my local Vault workspace and we can see that it is a Vault project. Because of that we will have access to the Vault add-in at the top of the screen. So I'm just going to choose to open a file. I'm going to choose my drive axle folder that I just showed you and I'm going to open up the main drive axle assembly. This just opens the file locally. So at the moment this isn't in Vault, it's a complete local file. 
but I want to get this into Vault. It's at a state now where I've started to use Vault, I have a new Vault, so I want to put this design into, into that Vault. We go to my Vault tab, and I'm going to select Login. This logs me into my ADMS console, and therefore into my SQL database and file store. At this point, I've got nothing in the Vault, so I can't do anything else other than check in this file. I'm just going to give it a comment, always best practice to give comments, and I'm going to say that I want to close my files and delete my working copies. Again, always best practice because we want all of the working files to be live and most up to date inside of Vault. If I press OK, Inventor will send the files to the Vault. At this point it's essentially uploading them from my machine directly into the Vault file store and SQL database. Once that's done you can see it's closed my window. If I go back to my Vault workspace and look in my Drive Axle folder, you can see that everything that was in there has been removed. And if I drop now into my Vault client, we can see that if I go to Designs, I now have a Drive Axle folder which contains the files I was just working on. If we look at the center at the bottom of the screen, we can see that when I select a file, I get a preview area. So this preview area gives us a number of pieces of information. First of all, we can see the history of the file. At the moment, we only have one version. We've literally only just checked this file into the vault. So because of that, we only have one version. We can see the file name, the revision, which we shall come back to in a second, the state, which again, we shall come back to in a second, who it was created by, when it was checked in, and the initial comment. If I go to uses, because it's a part, it's got no uses. However, if I go to where used, because it's a part, it is part of an assembly. And that assembly is part of a top level assembly. Finally, we have a preview area. When you check your files into the Vault, Vault automatically creates a DWF 3D or 2D preview of that file. This allows Vault users to be able to quickly have a look at a design, put measurements on it, and essentially just have a little look at a preview without needing to download and work on that file locally. This works the same as with 2D and 3D parts and drawings. If we just select an assembly, we can see that we have the same information under those tabs with slight differences under the uses tab because it has parts that are used within that assembly. So before we go any further, let's start talking about both the states and the revisions that these files have had attached to them. You can see that when I've checked it in, it's automatically picked up a work in progress state and it's automatically picked up a revision. If we look to the right hand side we have a blue category icon. So what's happened is when we've checked those files into the Vault, Vault has automatically assigned them a category. We have categories for both files and folders. If we look at the file categories we can see we have an engineering category, an images category, an office category, and so on and so forth. Each one of those categories has a life cycle and a revision scheme attached to it. You can see that we can have more than one life cycle or more than one revision scheme attached to a specific category. That just means that in this instance, when an engineering file is in the vault, the default life cycle is flexible release process but we can also choose to use the long lead time release process should we want to. When an engineering file is checked into the vault it will only ever use the standard alphabetic format for its revision schemes. If we have a look at the rules we can see exactly how vault is taking those files and assigning them a category. I've simply gone in 
and set up a handful of rules based on file properties as they come in. For example, an inventor part, when it's checked into the vault, so apply rules on object creation, when a file comes in and the file extension contains IPT, it automatically assigns it an engineering category. When a PDF document comes in and the file extension contains PDF, it automatically assigns it the office category. And because it's doing that, it's also automatically assigning those lifecycle states and those revisions. If we have a look at the revision schemes, again, you have a few directly out of the box, which are bog standard, but you also have the ability to create your own very quickly. We're just using the standard out of the box ones today, and we can see that we have a standard alphabetic format, which gives you a primary sequence of A through to Z. You then have a secondary of numerical, so um, A.1, and then if necessary you have a tertiary A.1.1, for example. Taking a look at life cycles, again, these are all out of the box, completely standard. We have basic release processes, flexible release processes, simple release processes, etc, etc. Once again, these are fully customizable and you can create your own very quickly. If I select flexible release process, we can see some of the life cycle states down the bottom on the left hand side. So we've got a work in progress state a for review state where a product may be going to a review board, a release state when a product may be released to be manufactured so therefore it can't be edited or changed. We have a quick, a quick change state which may be perhaps when a quick change is approved to be made and it doesn't need to go back through a review board and an obsolete state, a state for retirement. We can have, have a look at transitions, so where can you go from what state? So from work in progress I can go to for review and from obsolete I can only ever go back to work in progress. I can't go from obsolete to released for example. We have security based on your different life cycle states. We have control levels based on different life cycle states. We also have default comments. All of these are obviously tied in quite heavily to the security of the users which showed you earlier. For example, when a, a design is work in progress, your designers will be able to work on the file. When it's sent to a review board, so when it's for review, the designers may still be able to open it and look at it, but they won't be able to edit it. They will only be able to edit it if that review board determines that the file needs to go back to work in progress. If the review board determines that the file is OK and ready to be manufactured, they would change the state to released and at that point nobody would be able to edit that file. It would be completely locked down until it was sent back to work in progress at which point it would obviously bump the revision to the next level. So we've got some inventor files here that are currently work in progress and revision A and what we're going to do is just run through a couple of workflows. We have the ability to work directly within Vault first of all. For example, I can take any of these files and I can either double click or use a right click to do several things from get or check out a file which would open a file for you to be able to edit, to changing the state so taking a file and giving it a review state, an obsolete state, a release state or even changing the category. We've also got the ability to work directly with inside our CAD applications, giving the designers the comfort of an interface that they're familiar with and functionality that they're already very quick at working with. Essentially keeping that workflow um, and the, the speed they're able to work at at a maximum. I'm just going to double click my drive axle assembly. It's going to say, do you want to check it out? It's not currently checked out to you. At the moment I'm going to say no, I don't want to check this out, I just want to open it and have a look to see what's going on. We can see that automatically opens it from with to um, my inventor professional. I'm just going to have a little look around and we can see that we need to make a couple of changes. We need to put another brake disc, another alloy wheel and another tyre on the opposite side of this axle. 
We also need to add some standard content center parts to put some bolts on the end of this, um, these threads. What I'm going to do is just go to my vault tab and just ensure that I'm logged into the vault, which I am. I'm going to go back to my assemble tab and I'm going to go to place. But rather than place these parts from my hard drive directly into the assembly, I'm going to choose to place them from the vault. This brings up a little user interface, the same as if I was to use open from vault. It lets me browse through my vault. I have a sophisticated search on the left hand side. So should I want to, I can search the entirety of my vault and I can even save searches for use at a later date should I want to. In this case, I'm not going to use the search. I'm literally going to drop back because I want to multi-select, go into my drive axle folder and we need to place one wheel and one brake disc. I'm just going to press open and it gives me the ability to literally drop these in to my assembly. At this point I've made a change. I've added into this assembly so therefore I'm editing it. Because I'm editing it I need to check it out. So I'm just going to say yes I would like to check this assembly out. It places the files in and I'm now editing this assembly live on my machine. So we're just going to make some very quick constraints. This is a relatively simplistic assembly. It's not done in full detail. Um, and I know that many of you on this session are not CAD users. So I'm going to keep this as simplistic as I can. I'm just going to put some center line mates to align this brake disc in the correct location on the hub. I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this wheel going to put in some center line constraints to align it on the bolts. And finally, let's just drag that out and just constrain it face to face onto the back of the brake disc. Again, I'm not being overly accurate. I'm just putting this together to show you the functionality. So we've got the wheel now on the other side. What I want to do now is just add some bolts in. I have the bolts with inside my content center. So I can choose to place from content center. Now this is basic um, inventor functionality. Nothing specifically complicated going on here. I'm going to select fasteners. I'm going to select nuts. And I'm just going to say that I want some hex nuts. That's going to look at my content center and give me a list of nuts. I'm going to filter to only ISO nuts because that's the standard I'm working with and I'm going to select the first one in the list just for ease. I double click on that nut puts a prompt on my mouse cursor. I'm just going to simply zoom into these threads hover over the thread you'll notice I now get a tick on the end of my mouse meaning it's found a correct size M14 for this thread. I'm going to click once to place the nut onto that thread and then I'm going to click the bottom face to do a face-to-face -face mate to place that nut in the correct place. I'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of these nuts directly onto their threads, like so. All I'm going to do now is simply mirror them onto the other side. So I'm just going to make visible a work plane that has been created earlier that's just in the center of the two wheels. I'm then just going to choose to mirror these four content center components over this mirror plane. That mirrors them across for me and places them in the correct place on this other wheel. Let's just make this work plane invisible once more and go back to my home view. I'm going to save because I'm happy with what I've done and I'm going to go to my vault tab and I'm going to say that I want to check in. You notice that now we get a little bit more action in this window. We have our designs that we've been working on. Now even though we've had all of these files open we've actually only edited the drive axle assembly. So that's the only thing that we need to check in. We've also added a piece of content center, a standard component. 
because it's content center it knows that it needs to go inside a content center files location this is because this is a standard component it's never going to change it's always going to reside in the same folder and can be accessed by this part and many other parts within inside my vault I'm going to add some comments let's just say that we've edited the assembly uh, added additional wheel and wheel nuts once again I'm going to choose to delete my working copies best practice press OK and it's going to say that it's going to upload all of those files into the vault and that's now uploaded them so if we switch back to our vault client and just do a little refresh we can see that under drive axle assemble assembly we now have two versions okay we can see the comments on that version and we can also see that under content center files we now have our uh, wheel nut now this is where inventor uh, vault sorry starts to get quite intelligent in that let's say that we would like to release these files now we want to um, get this to a review board so I'm just going to select all these files and I'm going to choose change state and I'm going to change them from work in progress to for review it automatically gives me comments I'm going to press OK that sends all of those files into a for review state let's say that they now get approved at this point it's worth pointing out that I'm logged in as my, my own user which has um, every single permission with inside vault normally once you would send it to review you would perhaps see a locked icon here and you would have to log in as a user who has specific permissions to control that file once it's in that state I'm not doing that today because I have a login that controls everything just makes it easier from my point of view as a demonstrator so this is now for review let's say that we're happy with this so what we want to do is release it what vaults going to do is if I try and change the state of these files to released and press OK it's going to give me an error so it's saying that it can't release the file because of specific restrictions let's just have a look at the details and it's actually telling me that there's something within that assembly that isn't released because of that we cannot release the main assembly because it would essentially be out of date should that other part get updated so what we need to do is drop back to our content that content that we've added really should be released the reason for this is that it's standard content it's never going to change if we now go back to our drive axle we should be able to select all of the files choose to change the state and say released if we press OK now we don't get any errors and we can see that the state for each file changes to released we get another version and we also get the latest preview you can see now that we have a padlock next to each of these the reason for that is that they are released once a file is released you can't physically edit it because if you were to edit it it would be out of date the only way to edit this would be to move it back to work in progress and the only way to do that will be if you have the permissions to do so so let's say that there needs to be a modification of some form so what we need to do is move this back to be able to edit it so let's say that um, there was an issue with the brake disc in that this was for uh, a racing car and the brake disc needed to have some material removed to make it a lot lighter if I take this I can choose to change the state of that part to for review press OK and you can change as you can see that comes back to for review at that point it may be reviewed on what needs to happen etc etc so let's change the state now back to work in progress which makes this file available for editing and you can see at each stage we get a different version so let's just drop back into inventor 
and let's say that we want to open from vault. We want to open that file from within inside vault and we want to check it out. Let's just add some comments and do an update properties just to make sure that this version is up to date. So we're just going to choose to add some detail. So I'm going to create a sketch on this face and I'm just going to use one of the new 2014 features and just add a three point arc slot into this disc. Once that slot's added, I'm not going to worry too much about dimensions. I'm just going to literally fit, extrude that all the way through the face like so and just simply put a circular pattern all the way around my brake disc, let's say 12 times. Once I've done this, I'm just going to select to fill it, and I'm going to choose to fill it absolutely everything, all fillets and all rounds, and I'm just going to do that at 0.5 just to take the sharp edge off. Once I've done this, I'm going to save my file, check it into Vault, So we've now added our slots and our fillets to make this brake disc a lot lighter. Now that we've done that, we can go back to our, um, our vault and we can move that back into a release state should we want to. Obviously working in real life, you would have your 2D drawings which would be the top level. In this example, we've only used parts and assemblies, so we've not had any 2D drawings. In Vault, a 2D drawing is the complete parent when working with Inventor because it references both the parts and both the assemblies. In, in other words, what I've just done, the workflow I've just done, you would need to take the drawing out and make sure everything in the drawing is up to date, etc, etc. So that's a very brief overview of Autodesk Vault. Um, I hope it's been useful from a demonstration point of view. I've tried to cover as much as possible while keeping it as simple as possible because I know that we've got some people on on the call that are completely new to data management and completely new to Vault. Um, hopefully that's been intuitive um, and it's shown you some new functionality and, and given you some uh, some pointers.